Okay, let us work out the question number two of miscellaneous exercise, chapter one. So here, what is here? In each of the following, determine whether the statement is true or false. If it is true, prove it. If it is false, give an example. In case of false statement, we have to give just one example. That is easier part, isn't it? So here we have to give the proof of that statement. Okay, when it is true, remember that. Now for the first statement, see if x belongs to a and a belongs to b, then x belongs to b. Let us consider a is equal to one. That is, is one belongs to a and x is equal to one. Assuming then B is equal to well, containing A. A means this one. Okay. Then put another element, any element you can write here. So your B, B is formed. Now A is inside B. We have to check whether this one element one is in B or not. It is just power of observation. Uh, what are you getting here? one is in B or not. You may be confused. Let us see this, this one and this. What's the difference between these two? This is a singleton set at where the element, this is a singleton set where the element is one and this is an element of a set. So that's the difference, element and set. Here set is there, but not the element. We need the element, isn't it? So by observation, by observing these two, what do we get? We get one is not an element of B. That is, given statement is, false. Example is this one. Okay. The other question, second question means if A is subset of B and B is belonging to C, then we have to check A is in C or not, right? So let us consider A, B and correspondingly C so that uh, we can check whether this statement is true or false. Okay, let A is equal to 1. Okay, and this is to be subset of B. So you consider B is that way, having that element, element of A must be in B, okay, because it is subset of B. 1, 2, okay, fine. Satisfying this condition only, right. Then B belongs to C. C is to be formed in this way such that this is satisfied, means B is in C. So B means this one, is not it? The whole set. I told you in the previous question that this and this, two different things. Right. That one, two means elements of that set and this is a simply a set. Now here B is given. So B means the whole set. You will write here the whole set. That means what have you written? You have written B as an element in C. Okay, then put another element for completing this set. So C contains B and the three, two elements. Fine, the given conditions are satisfied. We have written all A, B, C. Now we have to check whether A is in C or not. What is A? A is this one. Is this an element in C? We are not getting, that means this statement is false. So A not in C, observing this three, right? Therefore given statement is false. Example is this one. Okay, all right. Now question number three, if A is subset of B and B is subset of C, then A is also subset of C. Right. So 
satisfying these two conditions let us assume some examples then we will come to know that whether it is true or false ok a is subset of b let a is equal to 1 suppose then b having that element is in b so that a can be a subset of b right 2 then b with these elements we have to form c in addition to that we will put some more elements in c right 1 2 3 so you see all these conditions are satisfied a is subset of b because all elements of a are in b and all elements of b are in c can you say a is subset of c yes of course of course one is in c so it means elements of a are in c means a is subset of c so it is a true statement and in that case we have to prove so giving example is not enough for this how do we prove that as a, a set is subset of the other set so for that see the definition if a is subset of b then x belongs to a implies x belongs to b for all x belongs to a this is true for this symbol is for all ok a mein jitna element hai sabhi b mein hona chahiye ye agar hum log dikha paau to to a subset of b hoga ok so matlab ye dikhana hai hum log ko hai ki nahi a mein jo bhi element hoga wo c mein hai itna hum log ko dikhane ra hai ok so for that let x belongs to a then since a is subset of b this is given condition see here this is given so if a is a subset of b then every element of a are in b what does it mean a element of a are in b it means a mein jitna element hai sabhi x mein hoga hi hoga to a mein kya hai a mein x assume karke rakha hua hai so x b mein hoga right again यहाँ से आप देखिए तो B में जितना एलिमेंट है वो सब C में होगा क्योंकि अगेन X belongs to B implies X belongs to C as B subset of C ये ये भी गिवन देखिए सबसे तभी होगा जो जब इसका सभी एलिमेंट C में होगा इज नॉट इट और हम लोग को बता के रखा हुआ है B is subset of C b is subset of c that is given to us so every element of b are in c so here we have got that x is in b so definitely x must be in c as b is subset of c this is okay now therefore x belongs to a implies finally we got x belongs to c from this condition we can say that a is subset of c see that is given statement is true fine in this question if a is not subset of b a a ka sabhi element b mein nahi hai b ka sabhi element c mein nahi hai ye bata ke rakha hua hai to a ka sab element c mein nahi hoga ये भी हम लोग को चेक करना है तो देख लेते हैं उठो एग्जाम्पल ये सही है या गलत है लेट ए इज इक्वल टू वन टू बी बी में टू थ्री तो काफ़ी ए बी का सबसे नहीं होगा ना सब एलिमेंट बी में नहीं है तो ठीक है सी इज टू बी कंसिडर्ड इन सच से हुए देर B is not subset of C means all elements of B should not be here. We can write this way. Four, five. This way. See, B is not a subset of C. That condition is to be satisfied only. So we have considered C in such a way that all elements of B are not taken in C. Okay. So that is B is not a subset of C. Now we will check whether A is subset of C or not because this is our condition. So by observation we see that all elements of A are in C therefore A is subset of C. 
see uh, at least one situation we have got that means this statement is false that is given statement is false now let's come to the question number 5 here if x belongs to a and a is not subset of b then x belongs to b we have to check whether this element is in b or not now you check see a is not subset of b this is very important part of this question a if a is not subset of b uh, that means element of a are not in b from this condition we can conclude that all elements of a are not in b is not it but what is here x belongs to a means some elements are in a and those elements in will also be in b is not it is there any guarantee that a, all elements of a uh, will be in b if all elements of a are in b then a must be a subset of b but uh, contradicting our definition they are giving that a cannot be subset of b is not it so uh, de definitely this statement i think uh, a false statement so so i am leaving this question for you okay then let us go to the question number 6 okay let us come to the question number 6 if a is subset of b x is not in b then x is also not in a so with venn diagram you can see this suppose this is the set a and which is a subset of b b is another subset now some elements are there which are not in b that means x is outside of b now then x not in a what have you observed from here this is obviously x cannot be in a right so it is a true statement and if this is true then we must prove it how so solution if possible if possible x belongs to a okay by contradiction method we will prove it x m n a ye dikhana hai so by contradiction method we will prove this suppose x m a hai to x m a hai and kya hai and a is subset of b which is given to us okay so yahan se hum log ko kya pata lagta hai a a ka sab ka sab element b mein hai theek hai to it implies x belongs to b kyunki a x m a hai to b mein ho gaye hoga to satisfy this condition and this is given condition so this is contradicting our given condition condition do tha na ye do condition tha ek ye tha aur ye ki to pehle wala use kiya to usme hum log ko kya mila x b mein hai aur dusra kya hai given condition x belongs to does not belongs to b does not belong to b ye condition tha aur is condition ko ab ye break kar raha hai agar ye no to matlab hum log ne kya kiya galat kuch cheez assume kar liya so that's why therefore x cannot be in a so hence the given statement is true so this is um, about the question number 2 of miscellaneous exercise chapter 1 okay if any confusion is left then please comment on the comment box okay okay let us solve the question number 3 right now in 3 let a b and c be the sets such that a union b equal to a union c and a intersection b equal to a intersection c so that b equal to c so what is to be done to prove this we have to show number one b subset of c and uh, number two c subset of b uh, combining these two we get b equal to c is not it so this is definition actually so first of all we have to show b is subset of c for that what what do we show x belongs to b must imply x belongs to c if we get this result then b is subset of c Similarly, here y suppose c, then it must imply y belongs to 
B. If we can show this, then C will be subset of B, isn't it? So for that, let us begin. Okay. Solution. Let X belongs to B. Why? This is assumption because we are to show B is subset of C. And what is to be done for that? X belongs to B. If X belongs to B, then X belongs to C. That is to be shown actually. So somehow we have to show that X is in C. Right. Now can we write X belongs to A union B? Of course, an element always will lie in the union of two sets. If that element lies at least in one of the two sets, isn't it? Here X is belonging to set P. So definitely X will be in the set union of A and B. So X belongs to now A union B is equal to A union C because A union B equal to A union C this is our given portion. So it implies X belongs to A or X belongs to C. So two cases now we are having. So case one. One if X belongs to C that is X belongs to B implies X belongs to C implies B, B is subset of C. This was actually our target is not it. We were to show this one. Now somehow we have to show that if X is in B then X belongs to C. So this is the procedure. Assuming X belongs to B and then we are coming to the point that X is in also C. So that means B is subset of C. So first part is done. But this is condition if X belongs to C because X is in A or X is in C. Uh, X may be in C, may not be in C. If not in C, then what happened? Then X must be in A, right? So what happened in that case? Case 1 is done. Now case 2. In case 2, um, if X belongs to A, okay, then X belongs to A intersection B. Can we write? Of course, elements in intersection are only those which are common to both sets A and B, isn't it? Now you see X is in A, A and our, according to our assumption X is also in B. So X is in both sets A and B. So definitely we can write X will be in their intersection. So it implies and A intersection C. Why? Because it is given. So what does it imply? It implies that X belongs to A and X belongs to C. X belongs to A, that is all right because this is considered is in A. So this is already we know. But and X belongs to C. Now we confirm that X is in C. So can we write that X belongs to B implies also X belongs to C. Of course, so it implies B is subset of C. Again we got B is subset of C. Means whether X is in A or X is in C, it doesn't matter. In both cases B is subset of C, we have proved. That is, B is subset of C, we proved. Let us move to the second condition, C is subset of B. For that, let Y belongs to C plus Y belongs to A, inter A union C. Can we write? Yes, then can we write A union B? Okay, then Y belongs to A or Y belongs to B. Case 1. If Y belongs to B, then our result is not it. Y belongs to C, Y belongs to B. That is implies uh, C is subset of B. Now case 2. If, um, if Y is not in B, then Y must be in A, is not it? If Y is in A, then what happens? Y belongs to A intersection C because Y is already in C, we have assumed. And then Y belongs to A intersection B. What does it mean? 
y belongs to a intersection b implies y belongs to a and in case of intersection we have to put and y belongs to b what are we having y belongs to a that is already we assumed now y belongs to b y is in b means that is y belongs to c implies y belongs to b it implies c is subset of b this is our second target is not it from 1 and 2 combining 1 and 2 we can say that b is equal to c so so from 1 and 2 we get b is equal to c proved that's all.